Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And today we're going to look at the top five reasons to use PFSense. So PFSense is an operating system and it's an open source operating system for making a custom router. And uh, I've been using PFSense now for, I forget exactly how long I've been running my platform, but uh, it's maybe it's been about a year or so. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, take a look at my video linked in the description below and also carded on here uh, to have a look at how you can get a PFSense system built, how I built mine out and things like that. So before we dive into this, let's just go ahead and uh, jump on over and have a quick look at their website. The reason we're going to be talking about this is 2.4.4 is finally released, um, which is good because um, I think the last time I tried to push an update, there were some issues, uh, but I'll talk about that in uh, one of our points. Um, but over here, of course, PFSense, uh, it is an open source security platform. You can get cloud infrastructures, you can build, or you can purchase platforms with it already built, or you can just download it for your own build. So you can select the version that you want. You can go with different versions. You can go with your, uh, pick your architecture, AMD 64, um, or you can do uh, NetGate ADI and then download it and then you can build this out. And then what you get a chance to do is get on and basically build your router the way you want to build your router. And uh, so right now we're going to talk about the top five reasons to use PFSense. Number five, backup configurations. This is a really good uh, thing that they have built into their platform, and that is that you can export all of your information in an XML file and keep this backed up. So literally, you'll have a backup of your router. So if your router ever goes kapooey, your hardware explodes, whatever else occurs, you can just get whatever box you're rebuilding with, reinstall PFSense, and then restore this file. And what I actually found, uh, one time I did make a backup, of, or I made a uh, made the backup properly, like you should do, and then I went to upgrade the system, and one of the upgrades kind of borked the whole system up. And uh, what I actually found is if you reinstall uh, if you reinstall PFSense with that configuration file in the in the installation directory, it will automatically rebuild your entire system with all of those settings. So it's a really cool thing that uh, you can take all of your settings, all the configurations, all of the things that you've done to build your PFSense box, and uh, you can actually go in and make a backup of that. So if you ever do need to reinstall your router software or maybe you're upgrading your hardware, you have a nice backup file so you don't have to do all that work again, which is good because it does take quite a bit of time to build the uh, PFSense router up. It is worth the time, but it's definitely something you don't want to do repeatedly. So you can just come into um, and come into your diagnostics, backup and restore. This will bring us to this box over here, and then you can select the type of data that you want. You can uh, encrypt it. Um, you can not back up data or you can back up the data. Um, you can choose where it's backed up to and then you can download your file. So then with this downloaded, you take this file, store it with your other offline downloads and then should you need to come in here and rebuild this, you can go ahead and uh, restore everything. You can restore only certain points but you can restore everything, browse for the configuration file and restore, and then the reinstall packages is going to reinstall some software that it determined according to your XML file should have been installed, because there are some different packages to install. So number five reason is those backup configuration files. Very good reason to use PFSense. Number four, specific routing of traffic patterns. You can actually configure a few different ways to configure and set up different traffic, and you can configure those in different directions. Now, of course, one of the means to do this is to utilize a VPN and have some of the devices on your router utilizing a VPN and some of them not utilizing the VPN. So there's a lot of useful applications for this, and this is a topic that I will be doing a video on down the road. I don't have a set date for even when I'm going to start it. Uh, but it is definitely one of the things that I will be doing. Uh, but there are a lot of these tutorials. Uh, this is the one of the better ones that I've seen that will kind of walk you through everything, setting up the VPN connection, set up the interface with the connection, set up your gateways, add the NAT rules to allow certain um, the, the VLANs to use the VPN. 
uh, adding fire uh, firewall rules in uh, to the tunnel, the traffic, and then test the tunnel. So a lot of, uh, it's kind of a big article and all these are big articles. There's a lot into this, but you do have the ability to set up a VPN connection inside your, uh, inside your PFSense router and then route certain computers on your network through that and not other certain computers through that. Of course, the other thing that you can do regarding specific routing uh, is you can route different networks across different subnets. So if you were to build different subnets on your system, you could route some of them in different ways. So for example, you could set up a one specific subnet which has access to everything and then basically set up a guest Wi-Fi network. This is one way to do it. There's a few other things. But PSense allows you more than just two configurations if you want to do that as well. A lot of your, your commercial routers now will have a guest network and a private network. This one will actually allow you to have multiple different networks should you need some functionality like that. Number three, easy rules configuration. Unlike some other routers, which are a little bit more clunky, the interface on PFSense to configure your rules is quite a bit nicer than it is on numerous other routers. So this is just uh, one of my rules pages and uh, things are blurred out here. Uh, but what you'll see is there's different rules. Some of them are turned on, some of them are turned off. The ones that are actually turned off, uh, these are actually things for my, my own personal network uh, VPN, which is not perpetually on. I don't keep my VPN perpetually on and I keep my rules off because you have to enable certain ports to be open on your network in order to utilize an external VPN. And it's better if those, if those ports are not open unless I absolutely need them. Some of these are open and uh, these, are, these are some of the ports that I need open for some of the work things that I do on those different devices. But even those are set only to go to certain devices. So when those devices aren't on the network, sorry, can't access them. Uh, but the ability here is that I have these rules created and of course they're turned on or turned off and it's very simply coming over here and hitting the individual buttons and then uh, turning those guys on that uh, makes us very easy to uh, very easy to make your um, your adjustments. So I can very easily in the in the UI of the platform uh, turn on or turn off simple rules. I can create simple rules and shape my traffic in very similar ways. Number two, a custom hosts file. So of course, as you know, that I use a custom hosts file. Well, I don't actually put those on my direct computers except for my laptops because those will frequently leave the office. All of the rest of my computers, I control my entire host file block list on PFSense itself. So the way this works is you go into, um, you need to install PF blocker NG as a added module. And then inside of here, you have a variety of feeds. So what I have is I have the STL block feed. So this includes the custom host file that you can get on my switch to Linux um, privacy resources page. And it also actually contains an Apple file that's just going to block the devices on my network from checking in with Apple updates, which is one of the few telemetry things Apple does, mostly because I want my devices locked where they are. If I want to, uh, if I want to enable those, I can actually just come over here, disable this block list, push all my updates. That way I have control over those particular updates, but everything else is over here. So if I were to click in on this edit button, which I'm not going to do, uh, then you, what you would see is it's going to, uh, the block list here contains two separate feeds. And I just don't want people to see how, I, how I'm updating those feeds for security purposes. But what happens is every 12 hours, a cron job runs and it goes out and it grabs that feed. So if I've updated those files every 12 hours, they will update themselves. So what ends up happening is that custom host file gets pushed to everything on my network and I never have to worry about whether you know, whether certain ad systems or whatever else are blocking my, my platforms because the updates are running themselves automatically to make sure that I'm not getting, uh, you know, new, new, you know, scummy sites, spammy sites, new ad networks aren't getting in. So effectively I block a variety of different ad networks on this end as well. I also block session replay. I block cryptocurrency miners. 
All that kind of stuff is all done on my PFSense router build. So all of this is done automatically. Every 12 hours, it automatically updates itself and then adds those things into the feed. So then advertisers and things can't trick me around the internet uh, unless I allow them. And there's a few that I do allow through. Um, but uh, the custom host file is a very good reason. Pushes out to everything on my network, uh, which is, for me, it's just a great thing. Saves on a lot of internet resources as well. Before we get into my number one reason, I'll remind you, you can help support this channel by checking out switchtolinux.com forward slash support. We do have a shop where you can pick up t-shirts, coffee cups, mouse pads, and a bunch of other things over there as well. And uh, you can pick those up at shop.switchtolinux.com and check me out on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. That is T-O-M-M. -M. And the number one reason to use PFSense is regular updates. It is an active project with active security research and active package updates. Now, it is very important to make sure that you are getting updates because routers don't generally have a lot of updates pushed to them. It's very generally not very user friendly to push those updates through and routers are becoming a huge target for hackers as they realize they open up gateways and doors and problems. And so of course this is a consumer reports article talking about why you need to upgrade the firmware of your devices and that's well good and fine but you know that my commercial router that I have in this office it's it's just used as a slave right now. <laughs> it's not an actual router um, but that particular router that I have in the office there has not been a firmware update pushed for it for over four years and that is dangerous well on PFSense once you just log right on into the dashboard you can see hey there's a new update was available version information was updated today so there are new software updates uh, I will probably update this router here um, and sometime this week when I have a few minutes to make sure that uh, if something does go wrong I have the ability to, to back my system up and uh, the regular security updates this is critically important to make sure that no one is hijacking your router make sure everything stays up to date make sure all is going going good and well and it's very easy to update the systems just make sure you're running that backup before you run your updates so thanks for watching this video. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.